Okay, well, it's time that I'm gonna officially come out about this on the internet because it's something that I've recently discovered about myself that I was in denial of. I have bipolar. I have bipolar disorder. And my family has been there for me through so much, man. This has been something that I've had ups and downs for for a long time, dude. For a long time. And if you are not as familiar with what bipolar is and, and what it can do, there's two different kinds of bipolar. Bipolar 1, that's where you have manic episodes. They're a lot more intense. You can be hospitalized for those. I'll explain kind of what that is. And bipolar 2, which is the one that I have, it's characterized by extreme highs and extreme lows, just like bipolar 1. But the highs, they're more like hypomania, which is a less intense form of mania where you might not act as... I don't want to, I'm not going to say crazy or erratic because I don't think that those are fair terms for bipolar. I think acting out of character, acting a little bit more egotistical, acting like you're on top of the world, you feel empowered, you feel this energy surge that is insane, that is something that normal people will never get. It's like being on cocaine. That is really the best way I can put it. It's the sense that you you feel this euphoria and elation and you just think that you know, the world is, is your oyster, which is you think is a great thing, right? It can be. You become incredibly more creative. You have so much more energy, but it can also be an incredibly destructive thing when you go into those hypomanic phases. Because for me, that hypomania, I start to believe that I can do anything, accomplish anything, I get a lot more egotistical and I always look back after I crash from those episodes because you always do. What goes up must come down. So when you go way up and you're like on top of the world, like you, you can function off of less sleep and you think you can take on all these new projects and be like, oh, I'm gonna go do this now. I'm gonna go be a singer. I'm gonna go be an actor. And you really do believe that you're overqualified or more than qualified to go do these new projects. like recently in my most recent episode i thought that oh yeah i'm gonna go talk to these employees at disney and i'm gonna go work with animals because now i can you know i've got enough followers and i can communicate with animals and uh i've got been working on my psychic abilities and i can go and do that and like oh i'm gonna go be a singer now and do all these things and look i can sing well and sure maybe i noticed that animals are more comfortable around me and that I have that kind of affinity with animals. And that's a great thing. But by no means am I an animal tamer. By no means can I like psychically communicate with, with animals. I think they understand me and I think there's a connection there, but it's like I believed in so many more grandiose things about myself and you suddenly think you're the shit. And I've experienced, after you experience those, those highs, you go fucking low, dude so low and that's the hardest part with bipolar because when you go low man some people have episodes that might last a week and then they switch to the high low high low for me it's kind of been that for maybe six months five six months four months i'll be way up and then i crash and that shit i wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy man I would not wish it on my worst enemy. It sucks. Because when I go low, your executive function, like decision making, being able to use speech, be coherent, read books, follow plots of movies, that stuff goes out the window. When you get really low, every single moment, every waking moment, it hurts physically in your body it hurts you just feel weak you just feel like life doesn't have meaning and it's not true your brain lies to you and it tells you and then you can then look at your hypomanic episode and be like oh my god i can't believe all those things that i did and all those things i believed about myself and you feel silly and you know my family and I have been questioning like, oh, is he, is he bipolar? Is he not? You know, I go to therapy all the time. I have a psychiatrist that I've talked to and for years now, 
we've questioned like is that something that I have and now we're really piecing it together and after my most recent episode when I was traveling all over the place and and doing all that stuff and, and buying all those things with money that I didn't have uh, like I put myself in debt and I'm going to be completely transparent about that to, to just give some honesty to this man the condition it does that you spend money you're more ridiculously uh, you might feel more sexy and things and you're just like oh yeah I'm, I'm like i'm the most attractive person in the world that's what it does it makes you more grandiose and egotistical and it makes you believe that you're like superhuman and people often have in the manic episodes can believe that they're god they might believe they're jesus reincarnated there's also this thing called like psychosis where you really get into those kind of delusions. And I mean, I experienced for my first time those delusions that were that intense. And I'm a spiritual person too. And it, it made this huge clash with my own spirituality because I'm like, oh my God, I'm, like I believe in the oneness and connectedness of all things. And I practice more like Buddhism and things of that nature, or Zen and yogic things. Like those are important to me. But I was going to these extremes believing that like, oh, I've, I've suddenly become awakened and I need to just awaken everybody. And I mean, awakenings, you can have a spiritual awakening, but it, those of you who know, you got to, you can't awaken other people and, and get them to see, oh, this connectedness between all things. But I felt that real genuine connection between me and nature and animals and all this. And it was beautiful. And they say in some shamanic cultures, people that have shamans, that bipolar is the call to a deeper awakening. And that's something that I feel I'll pursue more and pursue with caution, though, because a lot of people have spiritual awakenings and manic episodes or hypomanic episodes. And there's a lot of delusions that can happen where you start to believe the universe is communicating with you in this way of patterns like through the radio through tv that there's secret messages and certain words are like emphasized to you and you're like oh the radio said that uh what i like i'm thinking i want to get rid of my friend or like uh, this is a friend of mine who hasn't been the best and this song that just popped on is uh no fake friends and then you think that's the universe communicating to you to get rid of that friend like Maybe you have to look at it and say, like, well, are you being rational right now? Are you, is that friend really fake or whatnot? You, you need to take a step back to not be quick to take some of those symbols because you start to really get into that. And, and I've read so many stories online of people with bipolar who, who reiterate that they've experienced a lot of the same things that I did. And it's crazy, but it, it's hard. And those lows, whenever you feel like you can't process and it's harder to just watch TV and get enjoyment out of reading, like I love reading. And when I'm just looking at a book and I feel like I'm just scanning the words and I'm like, come on, like, like remember this. And it's harder to bring back those memories or like when I'm having conversations that I just don't feel like I'm processing what somebody's saying as well. Or it feels like it's more difficult to be able to just have that conversation. Like it seems like I can't come up with things to say back. Or like normally I know myself as a very social person. But then when I get into a depressive episode, it's like somebody will say something to me. But if they're really going on about this complex story, like I can lose myself in the details. Because that's one of the things that happens is your your cognition can slow. Your memory, your short-term memory, your long-term memory. Like if I try to recall stories from the past, from my childhood it's hard to piece them together things that i've known normally and then stories that i've told before and that become so difficult or trying to string together a sentence can be really really difficult right now i'm having a really good day and so i've decided that i wanted to because i feel so much better right now to make this so that way i can explain this to all of you who i care about very dearly because social media has been my dream to be able to inspire people. And this is something that I've now got an official diagnosis for bipolar two and alopecia has been a part of my life. This is going to be another part of my life and I don't want it to own me. And if, if this is what I got, then I want it to be another part of my story. Another part of something that I get to share with you to show other people dealing with bipolar or mental illnesses they're not going to own us. We can do this. 